Howdy folks, welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. Today we're going to be taking a look at, specifically, the British Tier 5 tank destroyer, the AT-2, which for a lot of people, for good reason, is the sweet spot in the British tank destroyer line. And the reason this is the sweet spot in the British tank destroyer line is because at Tier 5, 6, 7, 8, and to a large degree Tier 9, all of the British tank destroyers pretty much have the same armour. But this thing's at Tier 5. 203 millimeters of armor at the front, 101 at the sides and rear, and you pretty much get that same armor layout all the way up to tier 9 with the British tank destroyers. The Tortoise at tier 9 has a little more, 228 at the front. But the Tortoise up at tier 9 is having some really big guns shooting back at it. This thing, the AT2, is only tier 5. 203 at the front, 101 at the sides and rear is absolutely amazing in a tier 5 machine, and that's why this thing was pretty much the sweet spot for a lot of people in the British tank destroyer line. And it's not just the armour, this thing also has a lot of health, 450 hit points. Just to put that in a comparison, if you look at, for example, well, any other tier 5 tank destroyer, the old Flakbus only has 350, the Stug only has 350. The SU-85, 350. The British tank destroyers tend to be very heavily armoured and have a lot more health than their competitors in the other nations. But of course, you can't have it all your own way. But to have that much armour and that much health, there are some serious drawbacks with this thing. And that's down to the speed. This is a 41 ton machine and it has a 395 horsepower engine, fully upgraded. Its top speed is 20 kilometers per hour. This thing is very, very slow. It doesn't turn very quickly either. It only has a 20 degree traverse speed. The armor, of course, is really, really, really good. The view range, not so good, only 310 meters. And the signal range, pretty mediocre as well, 550 meters. The gun is not bad, but it's very, very situational. Um, it's very, very similar to the 57mm gun that you also get on the Churchill III Russian Tier 5 premium heavy tank. Very, very rapid firing, 26.09 rounds per minute. The penetration is not bad, 110mm, but the damage output is very, very low. Well, the alpha damage is very low. The DPM is not bad at all. 75 damage per shot is not a lot. But with 26 rounds per minute, you drive this thing pretty much like you drive the Churchill 3. You just keep moving, and you keep shooting. Um, it does carry a lot of ammunition. 96 rounds of ammo. You can afford to spam your shots with this thing. You're very unlikely to run out of ammunition during the course of a battle. It's also relatively accurate for a Tier 5 machine. 0 0.37. And the aiming time is very, very fast. 1.7 seconds. Now the AT-2 pretty much sets the standard for British tank destroyers from this point on. They're all very slow, they're all very heavily armoured. They all have this big old weak spot right on top of the machine that's impossible to hide. And they all have low alpha damage guns that also have very high damage per minute. Uh, rapid firing, accurate, fast aiming guns. That means that the way you have to drive these things is, is put that frontal armour to work remain exposed and blaze away with these rapid firing guns in order to whittle the enemy tanks down and kill them. And you basically just weather their return fire with your frontal armor. Now that works really, really well here at tier five on the AT-2 because while well, the kind of guns shooting back at you mostly don't have a hope of penetrating your frontal armor. In fact, a lot of them don't have a hope of penetrating your side or rear armor. And the only real chance they've got is to aim for your weak spots. Well, the AT-2 only really has one weak spot, and that's this commander's hatch on the top. And it's not that big a target. It's about the same size as the hatch on the top of the VK-3601H. And at less than 100 metres, yes, they're probably going to penetrate it. They're probably, well, they're probably going to hit it and penetrate it. But in the meantime, you're blasting away at them with this 57mm gun, with your 110mm of penetration, your 75 average damage. And the kind of things that you're shooting at, at tier 5, for example, don't have the same amount of health that you do. 
So they're probably going to miss and not penetrate with most of their shots, and you probably are going to hit and penetrate with most of your shots, and, and that's how the AT-2 works. In theory, it's how the other British tank destroyers work as well. The only problem is, well, you go to the Tier 6 AT-8, and that weak spot's bigger. It, it's an easier target to hit. You go up to Tier 7 on the AT-7, and it's an even bigger target yet. And it also has some nasty weak spots on the front. And the armour isn't getting any better, and the guns shooting back at you are. And that's why down here at Tier 5, the AT-2 is the sweet spot, because it's still got that massive armour. The gun shooting back, I don't have a prayer of penetrating it. And the weak spot was, well, it's hittable, but it's more difficult to hit at Tier 5 than it is at Tier 7, or, or even at Tier 8 on the AT-15. The AT-15 at Tier 8, that 203mm of armour doesn't look very impressive whatsoever when you've got Tier 8 and 9 machines shooting back at you. They really don't care about hitting your weak spots. So the AT-2, in my opinion anyway, the sweet spot of the British tank destroyer line. Now a couple of words about the ammunition choices for this 57mm 6 pounder gun. You've basically got three choices, armour piercing, armour piercing composite rigid, or high explosive. 57mm high explosive is a waste of time and should never ever be bought, loaded or fired. This stuff will even bounce off artillery. It only has 30 penetration and for that massive drop in penetration all you're getting is a potential extra 25 average damage, right? 100 average damage. But you're never going to get 100 damage out of this because it's just going to bounce off everything that you fire it at. It's a complete waste of time do not ever spend money loading 57mm high explosive ammunition into that six pounder gun. So that leaves you a choice between armor piercing or armor piercing composite rigid. Now, the standard ammo, 110 penetration, 75 average damage. The premium ammo, 180 penetration, which is very good, still has the same 75 average damage. And that's the clincher. And I tell you about a game I watched, somebody was driving a Churchill 3. Now the Churchill 3 obviously isn't an AT-2, but they have effectively the same gun. They have the same damage, the same penetration, the same types of ammunition. They both fire very, very quickly. The gun on the AT-2, being the anti-tank version, is more accurate and has a better aiming time. But other than that, they're the same gun, firing the same ammunition. In this game, the Churchill driver uh, had a very, very good game. He got 10 kills. Um, uh, you know, it was a fantastic game. But he did nothing but fire a PCR ammo. And he lost 140,000 credits. That stuff is 2,400 credits per shot, and it still only does 75 average damage. You still have to fire a lot of it to kill something. And at 2,400 credits per shot, it's going to bankrupt you if you fire that stuff exclusively. Now, as far as equipment fit and crew skills go, originally I made a big mistake on this thing, and I stacked camo on all of my crew. I thought, well, you know, it's a tank destroyer, let's give it camo. Bad idea. This is a tank destroyer that never stops moving, so you never get the benefit of your camo rating. It only does 20 kilometers per hour. Right? It's, this is one of those machines that unless you keep it moving, stands a very, very real chance of just being left behind the battle. Um, so I've changed this for repairs. Again, because if this thing stops moving, you stand a very real chance of being left behind the battle. And people get frustrated, especially in Tier 5 games, shooting at this thing. They just can't penetrate it, so they switch to high explosive. And high explosive blows your tracks off. Artillery loves shooting at this thing. It's an easy target, because... It only does 20 kilometers per hour. And you're constantly spending your time immobilized in this thing. So I've switched out for repairs rather than camo. Camo's a bad idea on this tank. Now, equipment fit. My equipment fit on this thing is definitely not optimal, um, but I don't have that much cash. And, and what, I'd like, what I'd like to fit on this thing is a toolbox, but that's half a million credits. A heavy spol liner but that's also half a million credits. And coated optics, but that's another half a million credits. So fitting this thing out 
optimally is going to cost you one and a half million credits. And if you drive your AT2 a lot, then it's definitely something to think about. I've gone for gun rammer, which it doesn't need. It's got such a fast rate of fire anyway. Vents, which is useful, but there are more useful things you can put on this thing. A binocular telescope, which is mostly a waste of time, because this thing never stops moving, so you never get the benefit out of your binocular telescope. It does need something to improve the view range, because its view range is pretty bad, 310 meters. But binocular telescope is not the way to go. My recommended fit for this thing would be toolbox, get your tracks back up and keep moving even faster. Heavy spall liner, because artillery loves shooting at you. And you do have very, very good armor. 30% extra armor protection from ramming and explosions. Fantastic on this thing. And coated optics, because coated optics, as opposed to binocular telescopes, they work all the time, whether you're moving or not. So that would be my choice. If I had the money, and I played this thing enough, to warrant spending that kind of one and a half million credits on equipping this thing. Let's see how it plays. Okay, so first game in the AT2. This is a tier 6 match on Cliff. And the matchmaking itself is fine. Um, you know, tier 5 machines, tier 6 matches are going to be the majority of their games. Unfortunately, we're here on Cliff, and I am the only person on the entire team. There's a real old lemming train just rushed up the side there. I'm the only person on the team coming down to hold this corner. And I'm going to keep this in an external camera view, just so you... There you go, trees falling, first target, T-49. Just so you can see the kind of opposition I had to hold back alone on this corner until my team could capture that ridge and stop putting fire at them from behind. So I take a hit from the Type 58 and it takes half of my health off. T-49 comes out for some more and a Covenanter has just joined them. So three tanks against one. No. Four tanks against one? It's KU-1S. Now there's a Churchill 7 as well. There's six of them. And the only person backing me up is artillery. But now they're in trouble. Survived here long enough that they're now getting shot up by my platoon mates from the ridgeline. Uh, this game was over real fast. It would probably have been over just as, well, not quite as quickly. Oh, here we go. I've just been hit by an SU-85. He's down there somewhere, but all he can do is blow my tracks off. Again, and again, there he is, and now he's giving his position away. 289 meters, 110 penetration, not quite good enough at that sort of range. But there's only three of them left, and very shortly there's only two of them left. That was me standing alone on the corner in a tier 5 tank destroyer against six enemy tanks. Stayed alive long enough for the rest of the guys on the team to win the ridge here. And because none of them would come around the corner, they got caught in a pincer. And screwed them up big time. Do you know how much potential damage received in that game? Let's take a look. 1,775 potential damage taken, which uh, ain't bad for a machine that only has 450 health. So, yeah, if you have to hold a corner, and that's not an ideal situation, actually, for an AT2, because, yes, you've got all that armor, but at that sort of range, they are not going to find it difficult to hit your commander's hatch, if they even have the brains to aim for the commander's hatch in the first place. And I was kind of lucky there, in that the Type 58 driver seem to be the only person who knew where to shoot at the front of an AT2. You're not always going to be that lucky. But how can you do driving this thing aggressively, which is the way that you really should be doing it, because it only has that 20 km per hour top speed. You've got to keep this thing moving. And the situation is going to demand that you keep this thing moving a lot of the time. So let's take a look at that sort of game. I'm not 100% sure, but I think this could actually be the very first game that I played in the AT2. It's a tier 5 match on Prokhorovka, and you really could not ask for a better map and better matchmaking in this machine. Because you do have some cover going down that long north-south road over on the west side of the map. 
And I played a very, very similar Churchill 3 game on this map. Um, I called it the Road of Death. <laughs> and the two machines do play very similarly. Because you just drive down this road. All right, you take advantage of what cover's available, but you just keep moving. And you only really stop when an enemy tank spots you, opens fire, gives their position away. You kill him, and then you move on. And you just keep repeating the process. That's the plan anyway. It certainly worked in the Churchill 3. Let's see if we can do the same in the AT-2. So you're going to find yourself, when you're driving the AT-2, particularly at the start of your games, uh, cursing your team <laughs> and wishing they would slow down. But yeah, it's Prokhorovka. Um, very, very, oh, there we go. First target spotted. And you know, your speed, or lack of it, can actually work for you. Look at how quickly this gun fires. So you move up. You know, behind a screen of covering friendly tanks, at first, you know, you let the fools rush forward and die. And you take advantage of the tanks that have spotted them. Put your gun to work. And if you don't have effective shots at anything, you just keep moving forward. So, the, you know, the, the, the fools have all died. They've given away the position of some of the enemy tanks that are up this road. And now everybody else has thought, oh, I'm not going up there. I'll get shot at if I go up there. And this is where you get to take the lead. And you can do it because you've got the armour. And you only ever really stop when you've got a good shot at something. Otherwise, you just keep going. Now, you take advantage of whatever concealment there is. I haven't been spotted yet, otherwise somebody would be shooting at me. And when I get through this bush, I'm, I'm probably going to start taking fire. So I'm coming up to... there we go. And I'm not the only one. Well, there's a whole bunch. There we go. Look at the shots coming in here. Everybody is shooting at me. You can see the damage indicators. I haven't taken. The only damage I've taken has been to my tracks. So they're, they're, there's somebody up there. I can't see him. Don't care. Just keep driving. Keep shooting. Look at the fire coming in. Now I'm going to pop back up on their radar as soon as I breach these bushes here. There we go. There's a target. Oh no, I took some damage. <laughs> and I'll get to you in a second. Just... Give me a minute. There we go. Oh no, I took another hit. And there go my tracks. Alright, this is going to happen a lot in this thing. As people get frustrated, they just cannot penetrate your armour. They start switching to high explosive. Artillery, well, you know, I'm this far up the battlefield now. Artillery are really going to start panicking. They're going to start showering me with shells. I mean, they have been already. And that's what's causing me the most problems. It's those high explosive hits from artillery. Come on, where are you? And, and suddenly everybody else is getting really brave. <laughs> now that I've taken all the hits. And here they come. And that's just the way this thing works. It doesn't really matter that you're the one taking all the hits. Because you're actually getting spotting damage in this thing as well. Because the enemy tanks aren't revealing their positions until they start shooting at you. 
So, and because you're the furthest one forward, you're the one who is spotting them when they open fire. And of course, everybody else who's hiding behind you, you're getting all kinds of spotting and assistance damage from the damage that your team are doing in cover behind you at the targets that are shooting at you. And you can take the hits. So it really doesn't matter. And it, it, it all makes credits and XP. There's only one of them left, and it's artillery, um, and this thing is slow, it is really slow, 20 kilometers per hour top speed. I'm not going chasing after artillery, it could be anywhere, so I'm just going to go and sit in the cap circle now. I'm certainly not alone. I could go chasing after that artillery and try to get the kill, but there's no way, absolutely no way, I'd A, find him and B, get close enough to be able to shoot at him. So since we're capping anyway, I may as well join in. When you're in a machine as slow as this, your options are kind of limited towards the end of the game. Looks like a couple of us are heading out to that island over on... I mean, I'm coming over this way just in case. I'm going to cover this side in case he decides to take a pop right at the last second. Because we didn't fully explore these woods, and there could still be somebody hiding up there. We've got a couple of other guys who headed over to the island on the north. Oh, they found him. There he is. And there's no way I'm going to get there to kill him. And we've capped by now anyway. So there we go. Game over. So, yeah. Um, shouldn't come as any great surprise that there was a steel wall in that one. And easily did the most damage. Over double the damage of the next highest damage dealing person on, on either team. 14 hits received. 1900 potential damage. But you can take that kind of beating in the AT2, especially in a Tier 5 game. But if you think that was an impressive beating, you ain't seen nothing yet. Yes, that is not an AT2 that I'm driving. That's the French Premium Tier 3 tank destroyer, the FCM 36 Pack 40. But there's an AT2 on the enemy team. And what I wanted to show you in this replay is the kind of battering an AT2 can take. He's just popped up on the map there. Here he comes. You are not going to believe the kind of damage this guy takes. Now I know I'm not going to penetrate this guy with my armor piercing, so I've switched to my high explosive ammo. Watch this. See if you can guess how much potential damage received this AT2 takes. Just take a guess. Remember, he has 450 health. Oh, he's pointing his gun at me. He's got Stugs, FCMs. There are three FCM 36s firing at him, there's a Stug firing at him, artillery is firing at him. We didn't penetrate their armor. Critical hit. This guy just will not die. We didn't even scratch them. We didn't I'm out of high explosive now. Armor. Somebody got a big hit, now he's on 7 health. How long is it going to take us to kill him? With seven health remaining. <laughs> there we go, the Stug finally nailed him. Did he switch to high explosive in the end to take off that last seven health? Dunno. How much potential damage do you think that AT2 took in the course of that game? 450 health, remember? Do you think maybe he took a thousand? Two thousand? Three thousand? There you go. 56 hits received, only 13 penetrated, 7,000 potential damage received in a machine that only has 450 health. These things are tough nuts to crack. So, British Tier 5 Tank Destroyer, the AT2. This is definitely the sweet spot in the British Tank Destroyer line. 
It's the first British tank destroyer you come across that has a lot of armour. And at tier 5, this is a monstrous amount of armour. 203mm at the front, 101 at the sides and the rear. I've played any number of games, tier 5 games, where the enemy team have had one of these things and it's been the last man standing. It's just such a tough nut to crack. Unfortunately, from tier 6, 7, 8 and up, you pretty much have the same armour as down here at tier 5 on the AT2. And the guns shooting back at you are getting more and more capable of dealing with that kind of armour. So enjoy it while it lasts on the AT2 down here at tier 5 because it gets steadily worse <laughs> as you go up the tank destroyer line. From tier 6 with the AT8, at tier 7 with the AT7, at tier 8 especially with the AT15. They're all machines that have a lot of armour and rapid firing guns that mean you have to expose yourself in order to use that armour uh, and whittle down the enemy with your high DPM but low alpha damage. And the AT2, out of all of the British tank destroyers until you get to tier 10, is easily the best equipped machine to deal with that kind of, um, that kind of fighting style. Because the kind of guns that are shooting back at you as you go up the tiers get more and more capable of dealing with your armour. And your weak spots get bigger and bigger as you go up the higher tiers as well. So enjoy it while it lasts in the AT2, because this is definitely the sweet spot. As always folks, take care on that battlefield, and I'll catch you next time.